quick J Moore appreciation time. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, J Moore. You're one of my favorites. Don't you forget it. This, this will just be a, a the cold open. J Moore appreciation time. <laughs> Time. All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the to a live taping of the Mars TV podcast with my good friend here, the <clears throat> Impact Wrestling's Monster Savage, Congo Kong, Steve Wilson. Steve, thank you for coming on to the show, man. We really do appreciate you guys donating your time to a good cause. <laughs> yeah, man, absolutely. Thanks for having. Me. Uh, no, oh, no problem, man. Um, you know, I, I'm actually uh, a fan. I was, I was um, really excited when I saw you first. Um, you know, make your debut on Impact and mess with Laura and oh, this is just all good stuff, you know. Because like I'd, I'd seen you before, and it's always exciting to me to see you know guys make the jump, you know, to like TV. Um, which is one of the first things I wanted to ask is like, cause, so you got on uh, GFW first, so I wanted to ask how that came to be. Um, actually, uh, Scott Demore uh, had a big hand in uh, the Global Force thing. Um, I guess a couple other people had also talked to Jeff Jarrett, and I had met Jeff Jarrett at an independent show, um, IWA Mid-South, the exact one night, and uh, uh, he knew who I was. I put on my, my face paint and everything, and he, he walked up to me, and he's, he's like, hey, I'm Jeff Jarrett. And I was like, ah, I'm Steve. And he's like, no, 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 what's your work name? I go, Congo Kong. He's like, oh, yeah, okay, good to meet you. And I was like, well, well <laughs> all right then. And so uh, I, I did the trial that they had uh, in Windsor, Ontario, and kind of, you know, waited around until they started running things. And then once they started running things, I was in. That's awesome. Um, you know, I, it's always nice to hear again, you know, people making the jump. Um, so we immediately knew Congo Kong, and one of the cool things about your your character is that it's kind of immediately iconic. You know, you see it once, you never forget it. And you know, I'm very curious as to you know where that came from because I know you started out as Osiris, and I looked up some images, a very similar character. Um, but I always wondered, like, what brought that to mind? Like the name itself, I'm already asking questions. Well, I actually. Uh didn't come up with the name Congo Kong. I, uh, I worked for Juggalo Championship Wrestling, um, ran by ICP and San Clown Posse. And the very first night that I went to go work with them, I knew that uh, Violent J wanted me to paint, paint my face, because uh, obviously they're face paint marks. Um, yeah, and, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like, who would have thought the clowns wanted you to paint your face? Right. And so, yeah, we're standing out, standing around at the meeting, and I keep hearing, okay, Congo Kong's going to come out and destroy everybody in this match, blah, blah, blah. And I'm looking around, and I'm like, I know everybody here. Who's this Congo Kong guy? And uh, eventually he looks at me, and he says, oh, that's your new name. Um, you can use it wherever you want. And so uh, I was already doing, I guess, the – the character, but I was doing it under the name Shamari, and so uh, I uh, uh, switched. You know, stopped going by Shamari at the few places I was doing it at, and then went under Congo Kong. And then next thing I knew, I was making more money than I had ever made before wrestling. Ironically, all you needed was that that little push from the juggalo. See, we can. Right. It's kind of weird. Those guys are given a bad rap, but they really have done a lot for, you know, both hip-hop and wrestling, you know, in their entirety of their careers. You know, I feel like we all owe it to them to give them a little bit of respect. Absolutely, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, they, they, you know, they, they put certain guys like me on the map, you know. They allowed me to to uh, 
uh, be seen in a place where I was never seen before. So, absolutely, you know, I mean, they've they've given some help to guys like Vampiro, who I, I watched a, a match with. Uh, he fought Vampiro, and it, it was it was a lot of fun just to see like dream teams I didn't know I needed, but now I need. It's just always a good time to see stuff like that. <laughs> um, so uh, your Wikipedia says uh, your Wikipedia page says that you were playing football at uh, Saginaw Valley State. Am I saying that correctly? Saginaw, yeah. Saginaw, okay, and um. Yeah. You saw an advertisement for a wrestling school. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I was home home over the summer and uh, went into a video game store to, to try to see if I could find you know a used game to play, I guess, or or whatever. And then there was uh, there was a giant poster on the wall for an upcoming indie show, uh, championship wrestling of Michigan. And at the bottom it says. Uh, would you like to be a pro wrestler? Call this number. So I called that number, and I ended up leaving school. Twenty years later, I am. <laughs> well, hey, that that worked out clearly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It took a while, but it definitely worked out. I actually, I actually made the the opposite decision a little bit ago. I left wrestling to pursue college. Um, you know, because I, I, I thought I felt more comfortable with the safety netting of having some kind of education. So that way, if I bust my brains yeah. in again, you know, I, I know what to do. But I mean, you got it. You got it made now, so it was, I say it's all good. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, that's that's the more responsible choice, absolutely. So all you kids at home watching, get your education, no matter what it's in. Get an education. Well, get something you can make money in, because there's some stuff that is a bunch of bullcrap, and you know, they just try to sell you. A degree or whatever, and you can't even do anything with it. You can't even afford to pay the money back. So, yeah, get your education. In all fairness, I'm getting my broadcast journalism degree, and I've got you on my show. So, <laughs> I mean, seems like it's working for you. Seems like it's working out. It doesn't work. Yeah, exactly. It looks like it's working. So, okay. Um, this just popped in my head. What were you originally going to school for? I started off wanting to be a teacher. Um, I couldn't figure out what subject I wanted to, to teach. Uh, English was like the first one because uh, a couple of my English teachers were my favorite teachers and they were the most enjoyable to be around. And then I thought about it and I was like, eh, I don't want to do that. Maybe we'll do some some health classes or something like that or some PE. Uh, and then the more I thought about that, I was like, eh, I don't want to do that. And then I was like, well, since I'm this far in this program let's see about you know maybe psychology or something but it just seemed no matter what it was the only thing that I really wanted to do when I woke up in the morning the first thing on my mind was rest well second thing after the game uh, uh, now I'm immediately imagining Congo Kong in any of those positions <laughs> I, I would give so much money to see like a Saturday Night Live bit of Congo Kong teaching English. Right. Uh, sp- speaking of uh, the unspeaking Congo Kong, um, so I, I had mentioned to you on Twitter, uh, I wasn't originally going to ask this question on air because it didn't seem that interesting, but apparently you had some words to say. Uh, the inspiration for the character, uh, you know, it immediately calls back to, like, Wild Samoans or Kamala. I made mention of Umaga, and you wanted to save it. So where did the inspiration for the Congo Kong Osiris silent monster character come from? Um, Osiris actually talked. Uh, that was more an extension of Steve Wilson. That was me, you know, amping myself up, I guess, either being a, a bigger a-hole or... Uh, you know, this, the guy who wants to be a superhero. Um, Congo Kong and the, the whole idea of being silent was, was along the veins of Umaga and Kamala. Um, to me, Kamala always appeared dumb, and I did not want that. You know, Umaga seemed like the, I guess, the more intelligent savage, savage but I wanted to present myself in something that was not 
degrading, I guess. Does that make sense? Yes, um, absolutely. You know, I don't, I don't, I didn't, I hated the idea of me going out there and acting like I was dumb, you know, or like I, I couldn't talk or, you know, so then I, I kind of reversed it and turned it into, does he talk or, you know what I'm saying? It, it, does he understand what we're doing, what we're saying? Like, it, is he, is he as dumb as he, he, you think we think he is, you know, or is he just playing us? What is it? And people, you know, just like uh, <clears throat> when uh, ring announcers are announcing me and they, they announce me from the deepest, darkest jungles of Africa, I can't tell you there's not much more that chaps my hide any more than that. Why? Because I never said I was from Africa. I just said deepest, darkest jungle. That could be jungles of somebody's mind. That could be the jungles of New York. You never really know. You know what I'm saying? And that's the beauty of it. Of not painting somebody in a box like that, you know, especially a character like my um, play people, you know, they they already have this preconceived notion of what it is or what it's supposed to be, but they really don't know. I can see that. Um, you know, I've heard stories of, uh, for example, the uh, I've spoken to the Lugeneron guys, for example, and a lot of them say that their characters on that show come from like an immediate reaction the producers have. Which, by the way, does that mean Jeff? They think Jeff Cobb is some kind of serial killer. That's a beside different episode. Well, <laughs> different episode. But anyways, you get the idea. Like the preconceived notions. Um, I, I totally get that. My preconceived notion was that I was cute. I was literally in a tag team called the Adorable Alliance. Oh wow! Wow. I mean, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Broke my heart a little. Broke my heart a little. Yeah. They, they, they lied to you, kid. Oh. <laughs> oh, Steve. Why? <laughs> I know we were friends. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, we were friends. All right. <laughs> no, no, it's all good. I get it. <laughs> um, I actually had another uh, Impact guy on, Robbie E, and he, he kept forgetting uh, my name. Right. That was a good time. That was a good one. At one point, he called me Buzz Aldrin. I'm not going to lie. That was a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> um. Okay, so... Um, as long as we're still talking about the character, I'll skip ahead a little bit in my list. Um, you mentioned not wanting to be degrading, and I noticed there's a little bit of uh, controversy to the Savage character, you know. There were complaints when Umaga did it, complaints when Kamala did it. Uh, Tony Atlas, when he came out for a little short bit within his African travel gear, he was given, you know, some crap about it. Uh, how do you feel in general, I guess? Because you've said you don't want to state it specifically from Africa or specifically, you know. How, what are your uh, feelings on this? Um, I saw a lot of a lot of backlash when I first debuted, and that you know people were talking about uh, that's racist and why are they doing that? And it's two thousand and whatever year it was I think sixteen, maybe seventeen, possibly seventeen. Yeah, and uh, <clears throat> I'm just like, who's it racist towards? You know, what I'm saying I'm the, the one out there doing it. Like, what do you, you know? It's my character. They didn't tell me, hey this is what you got to do in order to be on TV for us. They hired me as that. And, you know, how I choose to portray that, that's on me because it is my character. Now, when I first got there, I will say that there was some misunderstanding between uh, the higher-ups and myself because they felt like if I was going to do that character, I might as well go ahead and be the dumb guy. And I was specifically told one night, when you go out there, I want you to look at the lights, like, what are these? And then I want you to look at the people like, why are these people here looking at me? And I was like, those lights have been there since I've been coming here. And the people are sitting in the audience because they paid to see us wrestle. Uh, why try to insult their intelligence? You know what I'm saying? I mean, I get it. I'm from the jungle, but it's 2016, 17. There's internet in the jungle by now, I'm sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, well, let's settle it right now. Congo Kong is not dumb. I can even prove that from a match I saw. I don't remember specifically who you were wrestling, but I remember some gentleman in the background was like at a high school gym, uh, was calling you ugly, you did it a couple times, you ended it up outside the ring, you didn't go towards him, you ended up out there. It's like you stood over him for a second, you gave him double birds, and I, I, I'm still laughing about that. All weekend I've been laughing about Congo giving double birds. That made me so happy. That, I feel like that's evidence to the Congo Kong character knowing exactly what we're saying. I, I, you, I 
like I can't go out there and pretend like I'm completely oblivious to these fans, you know, and all the stuff that they're chanting and stuff. It just it doesn't work, you know. But we, if you present it as if is this guy crazy because or no, is this guy is is this guy unintelligent or is he just crazy because he chooses? From now on, uh, Congo Kong flipping the double birds is my version of finding the UFO in, in the photo. <laughs> I'm gonna circle with that with a red marker for the rest of my life, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, so another thing I noticed uh, watching a lot of Congo Kong matches. Um, hi. Oh, uh, we have a fan question here. Miss you on karaoke days at Susie's in Warsaw. Nate said hi too. <laughs> Who is, this? is this somebody you know? Okay. Is yeah, somebody... yeah. Um, yeah, yep, I know her. Uh, we, when I wrestled in Warsaw, Indiana for a company called Functify Wrestling Federation, one of the sponsors would have karaoke afterwards, and so we'd go out and sing karaoke. And, yeah, have a good time. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, now I'm imagining Jesus. Congo Kong singing karaoke. <laughs> This gets, I'm sorry, every new thing I imagine Congo doing gets better. <laughs> I'm just like, I like... Mean, it's, it's Clark Kent, Superman, you know? Absolutely. Um, that's that's one of the, the best ways to look at any character. Right. You know, uh, Clark Kent, Superman, I like that. Um, oh, okay, so, so back to... Um, one more thing I noticed during uh, a lot of watching a lot of Congo Kong matches is you're pretty you're pretty quick for your size, you know. As is actually becoming fairly more common uh, with big guys of the modern age in what a lot of people are calling like a flippy era. Um, but one, that's I would say it's a good thing, but that's not the point. Anyways, um, you know, with guys like Bam Bam Invader setting the stage for wrestlers of your generation, Brian Cage, Punished by Martinez, Luchasaurus, Warbeards, you know, how has that changed the way you look at a wrestling style? Um, for somebody like you, big guys. Um, I kind of wanted to, to innovate the idea of using my body as a weapon, I guess. Uh, you know, I saw it a lot with Vader. You know, he threw in his power moves and stuff. Because he was ridiculously strong and could toss guys around. Me, however, I don't particularly care to go throw around weights enough to be able to throw people around. I'd rather just go get on the on the elliptical and use the strength that I got, which, you know, I, I don't think I'm any kind of slouch in that department, but I think it's more impressive when uh, I can use my size and, and agility, you know, to uh, execute something that, you know, people aren't used to seeing, you know. Um, Rosie, you know, when I first met him uh, some years back. Um, oh, Rosie. Yeah, Roman Roman, Roman Reigns, brother. Uh, Rest in peace, call me. Training. Yes, he uh, he would tell me. He said, uh, if "Vince ever saw you wrestle, you know, he would he would crap all over you because he wants you to stand and be strong and and uh, you know uh, be a typical big man." And I said, "No offense, but if Vince saw me wrestle, then I would probably catch his eye a little bit better than being the next guy, you know, doing the." the big boot and the leg drop and the choke slam and stuff like that so um if I tone it down I'm never gonna stick out because every every other guy does the same thing so I have to do something to set myself apart you know and it's not that I was I guess trying to be disrespectful but I knew that if uh if I looked like everybody else then why why would anybody pick me out in the crowd Absolutely, and uh, like I said, the the immediately you were eye catching. Like I, I use the phrase immediately iconic, you know, because it's just something you don't forget. And you know, watching your matches, you know, for the last you know six days straight, like I have been. Seriously, I've watched nothing but Congo Kong matches for like six days now. Um, <laughs> well, one of the things I notice is you using your body weapon. One of my favorite things you were fighting uh, Danny Cannon, I believe was his name, and you like headbutt him out of the sky. Like, if I can gush for a second, <laughs> that was awesome. Well, thank you, thank you. Um, I tried. <laughs> um, uh, a fan asked in the in the comments a second ago, uh, at your mention of Clark Kent and probably my, my Batman sweater, who is your favorite Batman or Superman? <laughs> um, probably Superman because of his indestructibility. Uh, you know, I like Batman, but he's so dark. 
and I just you know I just I don't know I I'm not a big uh, dark character you know person I guess I, I like I prefer Marvel to DC like the movies all day just because of the way that they're portrayed. I mean, let's be real. Superman's been married for a while now. Catwoman left Batman at the altar. <laughs> I, I, I don't know what argument is to be made. Uh, all right. Uh, all right. Back to, back to wrestling. A fan asked that. I thought it'd be a fun question to ask. Uh, if you guys want to ask questions, go ahead. Instagram. That's why we do it live on Instagram. Is because we can see the comments and stream with each other. You know, it's it's a good time. Um, now. Um, Impact has changed a lot in recent years, especially in the time that you've come in. You know, it's part of a, a um, I, I guess, a new generation of talent entering the company, and with its mergers with, you know, Global Forest or its relation with Lucha Underground, you know, a lot of talent is integrated there from all over the world. How would you say it's benefited you to be in a locker room that's so incredibly diverse, possibly the most in the world? I mean, these are guys that I probably never would have met otherwise. Um, you know, maybe. Uh, possibly could have met somewhere, but I think uh, developing, you know, friendships and relationships and connection, that's the important thing. Um, you know, and, and it, it's such a cool locker room, so laid back, you know, it's not all stuffy, like I, I've heard stories about, you know, WWE, where everybody's walking around on eggshells. You know, I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful to, to, to have a, a cool working environment to go to. Is it cool to, uh, you know, meet some of the older dudes and get some advice, like a, you know, recent Hall of Famer Abyss? You said you met Jeff Jarrett and he immediately knew who you were. Um, I, I would have to imagine you've met Scott Steiner once or twice, both Michigan boys. I figure you probably would have seeked him out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fun. Uh, I've met Scott Steiner. Scott Steiner's awesome. I actually shared a ring with him. Uh, that was fun. Um <clears throat> Most recently, Terry Taylor, who uh, happens to be the finishing coach at NXT, um, and once he figured out who I was, because I wasn't wearing the paint at first, and then he goes, oh, yeah, yeah, you're Scott Demore's guy, and so that kind of made me feel good, you know, that, that Terry Taylor, all the way down to NXT, knew exactly who I was, and I'm just like, all right, that's 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 good. <laughs> um Okay, so I, I read the uh, Road Warrior Animals um, autobiography, and one thing he mentioned was the cool Clark Kent Superman thing of I can just turn it off because of the face paint. Um, right. You know, how, how is that? Would you say that's helped you have like a regular life as well as a wrestling life? Do you? Because I, I would imagine, you know, because you look so much different as Congo Kong, you probably don't get recognized that often in the streets. Yeah, typically, if, if somebody recognizes me, it's because they knew me as Osiris and I uh, kind of carried over. I did have a fan uh, who works at a local restaurant here. I walked in one morning for breakfast and I was wearing a tank top so he got to see my tattoos. And like, he was the cook there and he started flipping out. And like, he comes over to me and he's like, um, uh, excuse me, uh, he's like, are you, are you, are you a wrestler? And I go, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, like he, he knew who I was and he, he'd been following my uh, my career and he's just telling me how much he loved me and he, he's like, are you just in town for for a, a show or passing through or something? I was like, no, I live here. He's like, you live here? Oh my God. I am like, uh, yeah, I don't know if I should have said that, but whatever. And I mean, it was just, you know, that experience was awesome. I couldn't imagine having to do it every day though. That would probably get old. Absolutely. I, I would imagine that gets old. Um, so, um, oh, I've noticed uh, one thing. I noticed that I, I thought was fun. You've had a lot of managers in your day. Like that's one thing I've noticed is you've had a lot of you know Paul Hammonds, Bobby Heenan's coming through your, your your door. You know what I mean? And um, I, I was wondering. I, this is kind of a three part question, so I'll just kind of name them off. Okay. Um, Favorite manager you have so far, one you'd like to work with again, or one you've never worked with and you feel could uh, benefit you? Um, I mean, really, like, are there any rest, are any managers like alive that are working that are you know high caliber? I mean, I've had. Don't get me wrong, I've had some great managers. Uh, okay, what was the first question again? 
Uh, ma- favorite managers you've had? Favorite manager? Um, that'd probably be between Jimmy Jacobs, Rodney Rush, and Scott Demore. Um, you know, each one, we all have different chemistry with all of them, but it always worked. Of course. Um, a manager you'd like to work with again, so I would imagine somebody from those three. Um, yeah, well, no, uh, Jason Saint. Oh. Jason Saint is another manager I've worked with, and he's, a uh, again, a hell of a talent, and um, I think uh, one day when whatever managers come back into the rotation and, you know, companies stop being cheap and, and like, go back to providing uh, – the wrestling fans with good quality entertainment, um, then he he'll, he'll have a spot somewhere. You know, him and Rodney Rush are two guys that definitely need to be seen in that spot. Absolutely, and um, a manager you definitely like to work with. Um, you, you were speaking of managers, you know, still alive, still working. Who uh, Jimmy Hart's still around, and he's still definitely doing it. That was a thought that immediately came yeah, to mind. Jimmy yeah, Hart. That's true. I've um, met him, by the way. Fun fact, the only movie he's ever started he hated being in, he doesn't do movies anymore. <laughs> <laughs> which one was that? Uh, Monster Brawl, which, by the way, one of my favorite movies. I love Monster Brawl. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Uh, um, it'd probably be Paul Heyman, I guess. Oh, uh, Heyman. You oh, really no, can't go wrong. Let me, let me, let me take that back. Uh, James Mitchell. Oh! Because uh, I, I, I had the, the pleasure of standing in the ring while he and Jimmy Jacobs traded words with back and forth. And I'm telling you, I was walking back and forth and I'm like, dude, my nipples are hard. My nipples are hard. <laughs> and like, I see Jimmy looking over his shoulder like, what? what? <laughs> like, dude, you don't understand. And like, we get to the back. He's like, bro, I'm so awesome. He's like, I compared to him. And I was like, uh, I mean, you're pretty close. But yeah, I get what you're saying. Like. Just you know how he masterfully put his words together, and like, like it made me feel like it was a real situation, and I like I had to fight this big monster abyss, you know what I mean? And it was it was just it was one of those real moments of pro- professional wrestling for me. Absolutely. Um, we've got another fan question here. Uh, Somewhat slightly new to wrestling, they wanted to know what your favorite match is. I'm gonna split it up: favorite match you've been in, and favorite match you just like to watch. You can pick a couple. That, that's the fun of it. You don't have to have one answer. <laughs> Somebody just quoted my nipples. Sorry, that's hilarious. <laughs> uh, oh, Josh. Yeah, I know Josh. Um, also, like Big Daddy Dean match. says hello. Big Daddy Dean? Yeah. What's up, Greg? <laughs> um, back before I started doing Kong, I had a match between it was it was myself versus Hillbilly Jed, uh, me as Osiris versus Hillbilly Jed. And it was uh three stages of insanity match. So the first match was a four corner dog collar match. Second match was Fans bring the weapons and then the third match was a lumberjack strap match. <laughs> and um I'm assuming you don't know who Hillbilly Jed is, so let me introduce you to him. He's uh, roughly five foot six, uh, so about a whole foot shorter than I am, and uh, right, hovering right around 400 pounds. And a lot of the stuff that I do, the cool flippy stuff, I got from him. Um, the difference between us is that I had a foot of height on him, and you know, I was able to get into places to be seen. And otherwise, he should be where I am. To me, he reminds me of a Fala, Fala Bot. Oh, wow. Uh, you know, big and agile and, you know what I'm saying? And, and, you know, again, Fala just happened to be, you know, in the right place, right time type situation where he was seen. And so then he got to got the call. Um, but the match fell, I think, seven minutes short of an hour. Wow. And so for two four hundred pounders to be out there going at it and not having a dull moment in this match, you know, for that long, it was crazy. It, it was easily my favorite match of all time. As far as watching, uh that's a good question. That is a really, really good question. I I really loved 
Shawn Michaels versus Ric Flair retirement match. Uh, Shawn Michaels and Undertaker, either one I would take. Uh, Vader versus Sting. Vader oh, versus God. Ron Simmons. Also versus Ron Simmons, where Ron Simmons won the, the, the heavyweight championship. I was just telling him uh, it, when we were in Dallas together at a show, I told him, I said, that was that was like the realest moment in pro wrestling, even going back and watching that now. You know what I'm saying? And you hit that power slam out of nowhere. Nobody expected you to win that match and become heavyweight champ. And I, I said, stuff like that inspired me, you know, to want to pursue that more, you know, when I was a kid. Okay, I don't mean to laugh because that is a great answer. That's, you know, I, I do love that match. And so do many, many, many other people, you know. Um, I, I believe he became the first black world heavyweight champion, though I could be, I could have my stats wrong there. Okay, good. I, I'm not wrong. But real quick though, like I'm just imagining him taking one look at you and damn. Damn. <laughs> I mean, come on. Like that's, that's so obvious, you know, I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah. But anyways, um, but back to him talking joy because like he has this this accent and he, he don't give a damn about anything absolutely like, tell you how it is and just like put it on you and i love it ron simmons gives no dams but he says damn all the time what yeah what yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um we, we've got a shout out from uh, to my man, the Enterprise, a man I've I've been gracious to share locker rooms with. He is personally challenging you to a street fight if you ever come down to our great state of Arizona. <laughs> Get a book. book, man. Get it booked. <laughs> Get it booked. <laughs> um, who is your favorite wrestler to work with in the ring? That's another fan uh, question from Hot Daddy J. I got a, again. I got a couple favorites. Um, Hillbilly Jed being one of them. Shane Mercer as another guy from from uh, the Kentucky, Tennessee area. I thought like uh, I had to have seen a matches of his somewhere because that name immediately hit me. Yeah. He holds the state record for bench press and so he's ridiculously wow. strong. So like, oh, you've probably seen him in some of my matches online. I'm sure I have. Russell, like everywhere. Was he in the know, pink, least... was he in like the Bret Hart looking tights? Was that him? No, 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 no. He wears uh, he wears dark tights with gray or silver design on them. I'll look it up again later. We'll we'll figure this out. I'll just shoot you a message and be like, "This is the guy." <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Ridiculously strong. Like his 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 uh, his uh, finishing maneuver, if you will, is uh, he calls it the moonsault and battery. And oh my god! It's a power slam uh, from a moonsault. A moonsault oh my power god! From the top rope. So he's holding another grown uh, man and flipping in the air and slamming him to the ground. It's ridiculous. That is ridiculous. I'd love to see that. Um, I have to see that now, as a matter of fact. Uh, we're we're going to go back to uh, my list of questions for a second. Long neck Josh, we'll get to you in a bit. But um, one of my personal, like, more fanboy... Oh, Josh. Hold on, Josh. Uh, one of my more fanboy questions was, um, I've actually seen a couple now of uh, Falaba Congo Kong matches of you guys together. And I gotta say, like, an immediately imposing presence, you know, I, I, I don't know how else to describe that. Like, it's just immediately like, whoa, this is, they're gonna break the ring. Um, you, you know, <laughs> but I, I noticed you guys, I don't think you guys have had that um, team in Impact yet. So I was wondering if you guys wanted to bring that there, or if that was just something you didn't want to do. We're waiting on them to ride it in. I mean, it, to me, it's it's... It's Aston Gold, but, you know, they got, you know, him in one direction and me in another direction right now, and maybe... We're waiting for the stars to align. Yes. Hopefully someday when the time is right or whatever it is, you know, we can get that thing popping. Uh, that, to me, is, is it's, a, it's a given. That, you know, it'd be the thing, the, you know, the proper road to go to, and then to have us, you know, have a big explosion where we wrestle each other. And, like, we just wrestled each other this weekend here in Fort Wayne, Indiana. And uh, so much positive feedback. It was ridiculous. Like, you know, just uh, it's being able to be the guys, uh, you know, the, the size that we are and do the things that we do, you know. Absolutely. Um, absolutely. Um, if you can't break his fabe, that's fine. But is he actually, like, not a great English speaker? Is that just something he does, like, on social media? Because, like, I really can't tell. 
Because, like, it seems like an act because he's really funny. He's hilarious. Yeah. Send him a message, and I'm sure he'll come on and he'll talk to you. He's, uh, he's, he's such a good guy. Like, I would love... I, I was so glad, oh, would so glad to be able to get him out to this neck of the woods, you know, and everybody loved him. There were several times where we'd be sitting and trying to talk out our match, and, like, people would just come and, like sit around us and like I, I, I felt like we were holding court or something like that and it was just it was awesome you know just just being that guy that that you know people look up to you know him as well and yeah he's a good dude reach out to him I'm pretty sure he'll uh He'll, he'll, he'd love to come on and, and do your interview, too. All right, I'm going to take this clip. Fala ba. Congo Kong wants you on the Mars TV podcast. That is a request. All right. That's uh, a request. Back, back up. Back. All right, all right. So um, back to uh, Long Nick Josh. He had a fan uh, fan question. What is the most surreal moment to you in your career? You, you did mention um, uh, James Mitchell uh, prior. recent ones was uh, getting ready to wrestle with D'Lo Brown and I think I was standing there and like thinking about it and I'm like holy I'm getting ready to wrestle with D'Lo Brown like I grew up watching this this guy this is one of my heroes and I'm getting ready to go wrestle this dude like how crazy is it like you know it's just moments like that where you have your little mark out moments or whatever you want to call them um, you know wrestling in, in, in Vegas in front of 5,000 people for the first time was amazing you know, going out there, people not really knowing who I am, but by the end of it, they're like, okay, all right, we see this guy. Um, several moments. Uh, this last tour I did in India, where uh, the shows had 30,000 plus each show. Yeah, it was it was crazy, because we were, like, in, in these fields in the middle of nowhere, and, like, there was just all these people, like, watching the watching the show like just sitting hillside all because we were we were there with Greg Kali and he's like a god over there and, you know and just experiencing that country and seeing what it's like and, and, and seeing uh, like the poverty and, like how how good we actually have it over here and we don't realize it you know, things like that and, you know learn how to how to not take stuff like that for granted um you mentioned Kali before and uh so have you, my question here um you mentioned Colleen that can bring us back I'll use that as my transition back to talking about big men in wrestling um you know okay so there's the plus side to current big man wrestling where a lot of guys are moving a lot more than you know before um and there's also I would assume a downside because the old adage is the bigger they are, the harder they fall. Is it ever difficult to, you know, ration out the more uh, risky stuff when you're getting to uh, wrestling at your size? Wait, what? <laughs> okay. Um, you, you know, bigger they are, harder they fall. I would imagine, like, you know, uh, doing, you know, a top rope dive for you might hurt a little more than for someone half your size who's not throwing as much weight around. Is it ever difficult to ration these things out? You know, like, oh man, maybe I'll do the crazy stuff in this match when there's more people watching. Maybe maybe ease up a little bit in, at this show. You know, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, you never, you never want to uh, make anyone feel like they're getting less than their money's worth or whatever, but jeez, um, oh Pete's my phone is going off, sorry. Uh, you never want anybody to feel like they're getting any less than their money's worth, but you know, at the same time, you have to protect yourself because this is what you do. Well, this is what I do for a living, you know what I'm saying? So I have to be able to turn around and go wrestle somewhere else tomorrow. So I can't go out and do moon salts and, and top row splashes every night. You know, I have to switch it up, you know, and I have a, some of my signature moves that I always try to keep in the match. Um, you know, so that the fans can feel like they're getting, you know, as Michael Cole would say, vintage Congo Kong or whatever. But um, as far as the, the splash and, you know, definitely the boots on, I'm very, very particular about when I break those up. Absolutely. Um, I notice you bring a lot of personality to being Congo Kong, something that, you know, the other Savage characters, you know, ha didn't, didn't get a lot of uh, opportunity to do. Um, you know, specifically my favorite Congo Kong moment. Double birds to random fan. 
It's still, that's one of my new favorite things in wrestling. I want like double birds to fan to be on my next t-shirt or something. I don't know. <laughs> anyways, <laughs> but 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 anyways, um, you know, um, have uh, you mentioned that Osiris was a little bit more of an extension of yourself? And other than the fact that Congo Kong has become incredibly popular in recent years, you know, have you ever considered you know bringing back the more human element uh, to your wrestling persona? Uh, yeah, I've thought about it, uh, and actually I was just, uh, just talking to somebody, I believe, yesterday, uh, at a show in Detroit, and I was saying, um, I realized that at some point I'm gonna have to evolve, and I'm gonna have to, my character's gonna have to, you know, evolve, and so that means that I'm probably gonna have to talk, but, if I'm gonna do it, why not talk like Hulk in Thor Ragnarok? Oh my god! I would pay! Inst- I will buy five of your t-shirts tomorrow if you freaking do Hulk voice. <laughs> Nothing would make me happier than Gago Kong talking like Hulk and Thor Ragnarok. <laughs> Dude, like, that, that, that part of that movie, that made the entire movie for me. The movie was great as it was, but, like, just him uh, with his, his witty banner against Thor, like, I was like, wow. I was like, Hulk has, has personality. I love this, like, Absolutely. Like, if, if, if I was going to do it, I'd want to do it like that to where it still sounded like, you know, there was uh, there was monster there, but still intelligent monster. Right, right. Intelligent enough that, you know. It would be thematically appropriate. Yes. Yes. That big word that you said, yeah. Thematically appropriate. Um, English major, yes. it helps. Um <laughs> Uh, who would win between Congo and Osiris? Hot Daddy J coming in with the good questions. <laughs> that uh, that is a good question. Uh, I would probably have to go. Well, I mean, it's obvious Osiris isn't wrestling anymore, so obviously Congo Kong run out. <laughs> I mean, we've never seen them in the same place. Who knows? Right, right. Actually. <laughs> I, I did do a show one time where I started off the show as Osiris. I wrestled a match, and then I came back later on uh, as Kong. As way, uh, yeah, as Kong, as as a way because I cut a promo and said I'm done wrestling. Um, you know, my my run as Osiris has been great, and you know I just want to thank you guys. Blah blah blah. Baby face promo, and then later on came out and killed the baby face in the main oh. match, and like people were like, "What the hell just happened?" You know, like so yeah. It, I've done both on one show, just not at the same time, obviously. Absolutely. Uh, we're, we're running down the clock here. I, I like to cut it early so we get, you know, telling you time for plugs and so Instagram doesn't just shut us off. So, uh, uh, Steve, man, this has been a blast. Keep in touch. Thank you so much for coming on to the show. Uh, you've got plug time if you need it. You know, that's, that's why I cut it off so early. All right. Thank you. Uh, to answer Debo Watson, uh, he asked, what, I, what would I do if I made it to WWE? I would do whatever they told me to do because they would be paying me a lot of money to be there. So, <laughs> that happened. Um, but no, you can reach me at Real Congo Kong on Twitter. You can reach me on the Instagram as Congo Cyrus78. Um, and you can send me a message or friend request me try to friend request me on Facebook or whatever under Steve Wilson um, usually you know as long as you're not creepy I'll respond um, usually I don't know that you're creepy or know that you're creepy until it's well too late but you know whatever I try to make myself available to people who want to talk to me because you know I never want to be that guy that uh, you know is too big or too too popular for his fans for his people the people that got him there and, and the people that are the reason that that he is um and what am I missing I got Twitter Instagram oh and also I have uh, oh yeah yeah for all you wrestlers out there I make professional wrestling gear so if you want professional looking wrestling gear hit me up it might take a while because I'm a busy man and I do my best that I can uh, like today is Monday and it's my off day, so I will get back to work on tomorrow and try to get the rest of you guys taken care of. But um, please feel free to hit me up, and at least you know we can talk about uh, what might might work for you gear wise. Psst, 
we may need to talk later. Wink. That works for me. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Hold on. Uh, one more. For all you aspiring wrestlers, I still haven't come up with a name yet. Uh, as of right now, it's Kong's truly hypothetical wrestling school. Um, but uh, we will be starting a wrestling school coming up uh, probably after the beginning of the year. Myself and one of my students, Mark Bandy, um, acquired a ring and a, and a spot, and we're looking to, to train some young, eager minds. And uh, yeah, so hit me up about that if you if you ever you know think about wanting to, to train and become a pro wrestler. I'm not just uh, not just fluent in savage and monster and you know Titan style and, and I know all different kinds of styles. I know how to chain wrestle. I know how to do all sorts of things. So <laughs> hashtag mental club, whatever that means. <laughs> I don't know if some you're familiar with or not. It just came up. Um, no. Again, th- thank you, Steve, for coming maybe, on the show. Maybe, maybe. maybe. Uh, again, thank you, Steve. For... Yeah, okay. Okay. The Mental Club, it, yeah, is a, a, an MMA guy from uh, Niagara Falls. Uh, all right. Um, again, things to look up later. Uh, again, thank you, Steve, right. so much for coming on the show. It means a lot when you guys, you know, come support the Mars TV podcast. It really helps me. Um, you know, uh, and trying to get them sponsors and deals and whatnot coming in. Um, you know, thank you fans for coming in. I noticed a lot of love for uh, Congo Kong here. Let's give a, a big hand to our boy real quick. Um, you know, you can support us on Patreon. We're only asking for a dollar. Each dollar makes a huge difference in what we do uh, here at the Mars TV Podcast. Uh, you can also order our t-shirts from uh, teespring.com. Uh, teespring.com slash Mars TV Teespring store. I know that's a mouthful. Links will be in the description of the YouTube version. Uh, again, thank you, Steve, for coming on the show. We will see you guys another time. And I'm, I'm just, it, it just ends there.